Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, uh, because from the list of uh, people who have registered, I could see that uh, we have out attendees from all over the world. Uh, I would like to offer you a warm welcome to our today's webinar. Um, if today you are curious to find out how customers are using Power BI, I think that you are in for a real treat. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, because today, today we will be uh, having a joint session with um, our customer, Nicola K-Max, who is representing Van Merbeck Metallin. We'll abbreviate that to VMM uh, during this webinar. And uh, Lukasz Grabowski, our Power BI consultant from uh, our company Dynamics Development Center. Uh, Nicola and Lukasz, I'm gonna tell you today about an amazing project that they've been doing for the last uh, couple of months, uh, during which we have uh, prepared tailored uh, Power BI reports for, uh, for VMM. So I think that you are in for a treat today. Uh, before we get started, some uh, housekeeping rules. So first thing is that the, this session is planned for around 40 minutes. After that, we will follow with a Q&A uh, session. Uh, the webinar is being recorded, and this recording will be sent together with the slides and together with a list of questions and answers to all of people who have registered. Uh, throughout the whole webinar, your microphones will be muted, but you will be able to communicate with us through the chat button and the Q&A button. Uh, Yes, they can be found uh, typically in the bottom of your screen. The, the buttons look like this, or sometimes to the right. It depends on what, what kind of uh, client you are using. Okay, and this is, this is mat the material that we're gonna cover today. Uh, I will start with a short Power BI introduction. Uh, then Nicola will take the stage and tell you a little bit about Van Merbeck Metalin. So you will hear the customer profile and the project context. Uh, after that, he will explain how the reports came to be. So it will be a quite a captivating story about uh, what stakeholders were involved, where KPIs were decided upon, how the whole process of creating those reports was actually an iterative, uh, iterative project between us, the partner, and VMM, the customer. Uh, then Wukash will join and uh, he will host uh, the Power BI demo uh, with a commentary from both Nicola uh, from the business perspective and Wukash from a more technical perspective. Uh, then we will close off with information about our company, Dynamics Development Center, and the future webinars. And of course, it will be followed by a Q and a by a Q and A session. Right, so regarding, regarding Power BI, this is like a really beautiful and powerful platform which helps you first to pull the data, to gather data, to structure it, to visualize it, and then to analyze it in order to facilitate your decision-making processes across the company. Uh, what is great about, uh, about this tool is that it can uh, pull data from different sources. And these could be, um, it, it can pull data easily, obviously, from Microsoft stack, like Dynamics uh, 365, Dynamics NAV, uh, SQL, Azure Functions and Components. Uh, by the way, today's, uh, today's project uh, is the one where uh, Power BI was connected to an existing uh, Dynamics NAV. So this is a connection between an ERP back office system and, and uh, Power BI front end. And uh, uh, last but not least, uh, Power BI service, it's, it's something that helps you really secure, create, and then share the reports within the organization. Uh, one, more, one more remark is that uh, the data that you will see during the demo uh, was anonymized by us. It is an exemplary data. So you, you, it will be very easy for you to see the structure of the report, of why the report was created in a certain way. Uh, but sometimes the data uh, will be just you know, exemplary. The data itself might not make sense, but the whole process and the whole idea will make sense for sure. Uh, 
thank you. Uh, over to you, Nicola. Thank you very much, Rafael. So before I start, I would like to thank Rafael and Lucas and uh, Dynamics DC for giving me the opportunity to co-host this webinar and to present the hard work that we delivered in the past month uh, in order to obtain the very nice reports we have. So before we deep dive into the reports and the data they uh, represent, I will first give you a brief introduction of who I am, uh, the company I work for, and, um, and how we got to the point of making these Power BI reports. So I'm Nicholas Kmax. I'm a transformation manager at Van Meerdijk Metalen, um, VMM. VMM is a steel distributor with three warehouses uh, across Flanders. This is uh, in Belgium, for those who don't know. Um, it's a family-owned business since 1895, and I am representing the fifth generation, um, and we took over the management uh, in 2018. We are a product distributor, but also a service provider. So we have about one uh, 4,000 items in our system, um, mainly steel, from steel mesh to steel beams, tubes, and so on. But we also provide some services like um, welding, bending, um, sewing, and so on and so on. We have about 50 colleagues distributed over three warehouses um, across Flanders. So the process is that we started, um, and I say we because it's um, my colleague Manu Minya and I, we started uh, with some consultancy uh, at VMM in 2017. And in 2018, uh, the board of directors asked us to take over the management. Um, we therefore um, implemented a new ERP system, which is called Navision 2016. I know it's an old version of Navision. Um, and we have, in the meanwhile, restructured the firm. And we went um, in during 2018 from a real change process into a run modus. What do I mean by that is that having to implement a new ERP system, it's a real um, life-changing matter for a company. And so there was a lot of change processes into that. But once that these new processes were implemented, the people came into a more run, into a daily run uh, business type. And so um, what did we see as management is that we had a lot of different stakeholders within the company, starting, of course, with the board of directors who wanted to see what changes we were implementing bit by bit. Um, we needed to figure out a way to be able to present this in a correct way. Also on the customer and the sales department side, we wanted to see what type of um, what type of information we could gather there to define what indicators would represent this in, in a better way. Also the drawing department, we have engineers who are drawing um, uh, the, or redrawing the plans from uh, our different customers. Also on the supply side, on the purchase department, this was very important to be able to see at what prices we buy materials and um, to be able to follow up on that. On the production department, how fast are we producing? How well are we producing? How happy are the customers? The logistics department is um, with our trucks that we deliver to the customers. How well are we filling up the trucks? How, how fast are these trucks um, getting to the customers? And then of course the accounting department with all the financial metrics that you know. So we had something in mind is that you can't manage what you can't measure. Um, and this is really important is that when you start uh, uh, as a new management into a company, it's really important to be able to enable all of these internal customers um, to define themselves in which way they want to be evaluated. This really generates a buy-in, which is important for the future of the project. People have to be able to work on these indicators, on these things that they can influence or be evaluated on indicators that they can influence. So if you type in key performance indicators in Google, you get a whole bunch of different um, models that you can use. And we used um, this model, which has one um, added value is that um, 
it, it presents the indicators as being individual, common, or group. And here, the light blue ones, you can see that those are individual KPIs. And when I talk about individual, is that it's per department. Huh? For instance, for the sales department, obviously, the turnover and the gross margin and the tons are really important for the salespeople. But for the purchase, it's more the price per um, price per kilogram, for instance, which is a very important individual KPI. Then we have what we call the common KPIs, which are KPIs that are um, uh, divided or, or um, shared by two different, two or more uh, different departments. And then what we have is the group KPI, which is more a KPI that is uh, that has an impact on all the different departments. And here you can see them in yellow. Um, next slide. So before we get into the detail of every um, report, um, of the, the six reports we've selected, um, it's important to say that uh, the process of de developing reports, it's an iterative process between Dynamics DC and the, and the managers of the company. How you want to visualize the information, what data should be selected, what frequency should the data be updated are all questions that needs to have an answer. And that is going back and forth between Famer Big Metal and Dynamics DC. And going back and forth like this, it's this inter iterative process that makes the result even, even better. I can tell you right now, for instance, that we have developed um, all of these reports in the last uh, five months, but they're still work in progress. Every time there is a question that arise, we find some maybe new indicators that would be interesting to develop as well. So let's now deep dive into the uh, reports. We have selected five reports, which is one, uh, the sales report, which is for all companies, I think, uh, one of the more important ones. We have um, in our uh, stock department, the purchase report, which is very important for managing the purchases on a daily basis. We have the logistics reports to see how, how well distributed um, our trucks are. We have an end-to-end, -end, which is more a process-based report. And then we have the finance reports that is really important for the board of directors to be able to follow up on the PNL, uh, but also on the balance sheet and the cash flow. But on the finance report, we will only cover today the profit and loss state. So let's start with the sales report. So just as an overall um, uh, important factor, we have defined three main indicators that we use across all reports. And those are turnover, gross margin, and tons. Tons, which is in the steel sector, the main KPI. But you could also use meters, pieces, hours, depending on the type of business that you are in. What you see here in the sales reports are four main parts. The first part is um, the turnover. And here it's in Dutch, it's called omzet, um, the turnover of the year that you have selected. And you see a filter. Uh, a filter uh, filter on, uh, on the date. It's always compared to the turnover of last year and the turnover of what we had budgeted. Also, on that same part, the left above part, we have BM, which is gross margin of the year, the gross margin of last year, and the gross margin that we had budgeted. And you always compare to one another, and those are the percentages you can see there. The second part is the part on the right, monthly sales revenue and BM, which is gross margin. And here you can see the evolution month by month of your turnover and the gross margin. Then we have on the left uh, beneath side, the monthly tons. And here also a visualization of how the, um, the tons evolve with, uh, with each month of the year, of the selected year. And then the last square is the revenue 
year-to-date and cumulated revenue and gross margin over the time selected. The second part of uh, this sales report is uh, divided in two parts. You have the left-hand side where you see the number of quotes, the number of orders, and the number of invoices that were made, again, in the selected period, and the conversion ratios that we have between our quotes and our orders, but also from quotes all the way to the invoice. The second part here is the number of new customers we had defined new customers as an indicator, um, which, um, which was to us really important in the line of business that we were. And here you can see the number of new customers of this year and of last year, and what is, again, the turnover, the gross margin, and the tons that those new customers generated over the selected period of time. The third part, of this um, report is a more follow-up operational um, side where we really get into the data. You see four big squares, which are the first one, the quotes, and again, with the three indicators, meaning revenue, gross margins, and tons. What are the quotes that were given in? What are the orders that were given in? What are the shipments that were given in? And what are the invoices that were sent to the customers day by day? This is for the managers a very important um, tool to be able to follow up on their people um, on a daily basis, which is really nice here as well, is that you can always extract everything to Excel. And now I give the words to Lucas to give you a little bit more information about the technicalities of this report. Thank you, Nicolas. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so I'm Lukasz Grabowski. I was responsible for de delivering the report uh, with my team. And in here on this report, what we would like to show you is to uh, how to get the report to be more um, interactive and how to handle some specific scenarios like, uh, for instance, too many uh, slicers on one page uh, and how we deal with that. So in here on the first page, uh, we added a slicer pane, which is really nice. Um, and because in, in VM Steel, there are many, many different uh, dimensions to analyze the data, we did not have enough space to put them all in, in front, uh, front page. Uh, of course, now we can use a filter pane, but previously it was not available at the moment when we start preparing the, the report. Uh, so here I can press on the slicer button and then my, uh, my filter pane uh, automatically pop-ups. Uh, and for instance, I can use uh, different uh, dimensions to filter on a different level. So, for, so first, first of all, we can, diff we can uh, filter on a warehouse and you can see that my data immediately changes. Then I, for instance, I can use uh, the construction here and even more, I can, div I can filter my data to any specific uh, customer so for instance, I could put the name of the customer here. And when I press here and close my filter pane again, my slicer pane, sorry. The data then is automatically calculated just, just to that part. So I can analyze my one customer on, on the front, front page. On the second page, what is really interesting, uh, first of all, the, the page is self, self-explanatory, right? We have all the data here. Uh, oh, let me just quickly <clears throat> remove the filters I've used before. And uh, basically the really interesting thing is how we can uh, analyze all visuals uh, based on one visual on that page. This feature is called cross cross filtering. And basically uh, what I can do is I can press on one of the month, let's say on January of this visual. And then the data of the whole report uh, is automatically calculated just, just to that one uh, month. Um, so the, 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 the reason for using the interactions is really important because sometimes we can use one visual to, to analyze the other, uh, also other visuals. 
the, on the third report, this report is generally generally a uh, very detailed based report, right? Not only we see the results for every day, but also we can see details on a document level when we press here on the show details, which is navigating, navigating us through the, the, the details report. But what is really interesting is that we can also export the data to Excel. Uh, so in here, I can press on the short button uh, over here, and then I can press export data and press export here. And at the end, my data can be opened in Excel. So if I press on Excel, all right, I could, in here, I don't have any data because my filters are not working very well. Uh, all right, let's try this one. And the data we have is in Excel. And uh, that's, that's all about the sales report. Now we can move to the purchase report. Niklas? So on the On the, the purchase reports, it's, um, it's more a daily management report. But the first page, and we have two main pages. Uh, the first page, it's a page which is divided in two parts, where you have on the left-hand side, the sales revenue, gross margins and tons, once again, and the average price per ton. And those are the sales prices per ton. And on the right-hand side, we have the purchase which have the costs and the tons, so the euros per tons and the average price per ton. This is really interesting when you can drill down to uh, item category, for instance, or to a very specific item. But uh, Lucas will present this in a second. The second part of this report has one specific goal, and it's to know what to order and when to order it which is what is really important here, it's to define what is your minimum order point. Meaning if I have an item and I know that I have sold 100 units of this item in the last, um, in the last 12 months, and that I have a need of two months before it comes in because it has to be produced, then I know that I have to cover 112 times two to be able to reorder this. So. For, for every item, we have divided here in four main colors. We have used colors in this um, in this example. We have the blue ones, and all the way on the top, you see that 536. Those are the items which have an inventory that are over the maximum. What is the maximum? The maximum is obviously the maximum that you can stock in one place. The second color is the green color, which here has uh, uh, 83 items which have an inventory of close to the maximum. So we shouldn't reorder these items. The yellow one are the inventories which are close to the minimums. And here we have to be careful because we are entering the yellow zone, let's say, or the red zone. And the last one is the red, um, the red color. Those are the items which have an inventory below the minimum. Those we have to reorder as soon as possible in order to uh, avoid a uh, back order. So in terms of decisions, this report helps the purchase managers on a daily basis to make the right buying decision. What item to buy and what quantity to buy. I know this is a very much, uh, very, uh, this looks pretty much like an Excel, but it is very dynamic in the ways that we use the colors in order to be able to um, uh, Assist, assist the manager on his buying um, on his buying purchases. Over to you, Lucas, for the technical part. Sure. Um, thank you. So the purchase report uh, is built on many different tables uh, combined into one, uh, and uh, giving us all the details on one table visual, and, and this way we can shorten the part to to calculate the, the purchase plan. Uh, the most challenging and important from our point of view uh, was to easily distinguish items uh, or SKUs uh, which have low stock but high demand. Uh, so we took the data from the stock. So we have uh, stock values here uh, on to the left, to the left. 
We also take the, took the data from the sales lines, from the purchase lines, and based on that, uh, we have uh, calculated the demand and compared it to the max and uh, minimum uh, quantities, which we have in the front, front page. Uh, max and minimum reorder points are also calculated dynamically in opposite of historical sales. So that's why we also calculated the total sales from last 12, 12 months and also average for, from 12 months and for every month as well. And uh, based on that, uh, we have divided the SKUs into four different sections. As Nicolas already said, over max, close max, close minimum and below, below minimum. And uh, all of them are pretty, pretty easy to understand and moreover to filter. And this is the, the best part we can, we can do here. So if I would like to, for instance, just filter uh, only my close minimum, I can select this small button here and I can press on it. And my group is automatically filtered to just that one uh, minimum inventory in our case. In future, we also plan to create, to create alerts uh, to inform the key users that certain SKUs reach their minimum uh, values, uh, or even uh, giving, giving us the opportunity that uh, the Power BI team is, uh, is uh, constantly uh, providing our new tools. We can even use machine, machine learning models uh, to, to, to predict the future uh, of our SKUs. On the first page, uh, Nicolas already said, this is page more like an item or uh, item group related. In here, we, we've added filter pane, which is very easy to nice. And in here, you can filter your data based on any item number, on any uh, article group or uh, item groups or descriptions. And basically, both the purchase side and the sales side can be filtered just using one, one item number in the same time. Okay, now let's move to the next report, logistic report. Nicolas? So the, the next report, it's a work in progress um, because we defined the indicators for the logistics as being, so how many trucks are we sending out every day? Where do these trucks deliver most of the materials that we have? and how well are our trucks used? And that is the percentage usage. So what you see here is the report. On the left hand side. Uh, sorry, Nicola, we are, we are losing your voice a little bit now. You, can you hear me better now? A little bit better, yes. Um, okay, so I will speak closer to my mic then. Yes, now it's okay. Uh, so on the left hand side, you can see 822 trucks that were shipped in the period of time that we selected. This is a total of 7.33 tons, uh, sorry, 7.33 thousand tons. And it's an average tons per truck of 8.92, which is a pretty good average. But what was important to us is to see what specific trucks are loaded more or less in terms of percentage usage. And this is the square that you see left beneath. Uh, and if Lucas, you can scroll a little bit to the right hand side we can see the percentage usage that is, um, that is the, with which the trucks are filled. Most of our trucks have a capacity of 25 tons, um, but we don't always fill them to the fullest. And here you can see uh, in, what in what percentages they are filled. And then the last but not least, and that's a very nice gimmick, is to see in what parts of Belgium do we deliver the most um, of, our, um, of our materials. And here you can see it on a map of Belgium, this beautiful country, um, to, to see uh, how many kilograms and tons we are delivering to each and every city of, the, um, of, of Flanders. Over to you, um, Lucas. Thank you. Uh, so from our perspective, the logistic report was uh, the, the easy one to build. Uh, because we, the data structure was very, very nice and clear, uh, but it contains really nice feature. And again, thanks to the Power BI uh, capabilities. Um, so first of all, uh, if my sales is one country related, like in, in our case here, uh, we can focus my map, uh, focus the map only just to one country, as you can see on, on the Belgian in our example. But of course, we can, pro we can provide the whole map uh, in Power BI and we can switch between different, uh, different uh, countries as well. 
Uh, so, so first of all, I can press on any of the cities uh, of or the, or the regions like here, and this uh, allows me to cross filtering again to all my visuals uh, on the page. Uh, so it's really nice to 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 keep uh, state related. Or on the other hand, I can select any particular track and see my data based on that track on the results for that track. Uh, on the other hand, well, here we have used a tooltip tool tip pages uh, to get the tooltip to, to another level. Uh, so users not only can click on one state like I've done before, but also can hover on it to get some quick insights. So for instance, if I uh, hover mm -hmm. on Antwerp, I can see the uh, additional region-based sales and the totals for that one particular uh, particular city uh, or state. Uh, another great thing is that we can analyze the percentage of maximum uh, maximum weight load and calculate average for any state, track, or date like here. And this is just the beginning, as Nicolas said at, at, the, uh, at, at the beginning of uh, this explanation of this report. Uh, you may see that the report is uh, focused on particularly on tracks, uh, on, on dates and or states, but there are many, many other ways to analyze the routes and see which of them are managed, uh, managed better and where we need to still keep focus on to optimize it. Uh, thank you. And now we can move to the next report. So the end to end report is, is a much more process based report in that way that it's, um, it gives a view on the daily work in progress. Um, this is a, a very important for uh, our site managers uh, who need to have an overall view on all the processes within their um, production sites. And you can see it visually here. It's it's um, those are the main our main processes within our company. But every company has its own um, uh, processes. We have we start with a quote that we send to the customer. This quote is validated and put into an order. This order is then with an order confirmation confirmed for production. Once it's gone to production, once it's gone through production, sorry, and um, it gets loaded on a truck, it is delivered. It is shipped. To the customer once it is shipped we wait a few days um, for all eventual complaints uh, once there is no complaint we send the invoice and then there is the payment what you see here is a representation of all these overall processes um, with the number of days that on average these steps are done this is really nice to have obviously if you want to optimize um, any process or uh, your cash flow position as from production until the payment. So the quote to order is to have a better and more accurate follow-up on the quotes. That here you can um, uh, diminish the number of days between quote and order. That means you have a better follow-up with your customer. From order to production is how much production time is there needed on average for a certain type of order? Because again, here you can filter on certain types of customers or certain types of orders. Production to shipment is how much time does the company take to load the trucks, drive to the construction site and unload the materials. Shipments to invoice is the time between the shipped goods, the potential claims from the customer and the posting of the invoice in the system. And the invoice to payment, it's the time between invoicing and the payment. Unfortunately, about this uh, lagging time, lead time, we can't do anything about it. Nice to have here is the key influencers um, that are an indicator of what influences this data the most. But that uh, Lucas will have um, uh, a better view on this or give you a better explanation on this in a second. And one very important decision that we took based on this report is to implement an automatic invoicing to improve the delay between the delivery or the shipment and the invoicing, which is very important, obviously, for the cash flow management of the company. I give you the floor. Thank you. Uh, so the end-to-end -end report uh, from our perspective uh, was uh, one of the hardest report to build. 
first of all, we have uh, different data sources from across all the, the companies. So that needs, that has to be combined in one. And on the fr front page, uh, the report gives us some really nice insights, uh, but it also shows us how we can gently hide uh, any advanced capabilities uh, and use them only when, when we need them to use. So first of all, we have a, a really nice um, pie chart here, giving us the idea of how many uh, orders are delivered to customers on and after requested time. Uh, but in here, we have added uh, a small button which allows us to see what exactly was delivered uh, after time and on time. So if I press on it, you can see we have the data. Uh, we have the data uh, exactly uh, shown on a customer level or even on the number level. And in here, we can also use filters to to get the data exactly the, the results uh, to analyze the data the one the way we want. Now I can press go back here. Let's go back to main main page. The other option we have we have used here is to analyze key influencers. In other words, to answer why my lead times are on the level uh, they are. Uh, so we can focus, uh, let's focus on the invoice to payment parameter, which is exactly this one. And let's try to understand why it's, uh, it's getting on such a high uh, level. So if I press on this button, uh, I see not only uh, the details, of course, on my left side of the page, but the most interesting part is the, the right side. Uh, the key influencers visual. Uh, so, uh, so, and you can see that the main, the main reason why the lead times is increasing because I've selected the increasing, why my influence, my, what in, exactly influence my payment lead time is on our, in our case, our intercompany invoices. And uh, basically based on that feature, uh, I believe managers can uh, take some necessary steps to improve the timing on invoices, right? On the other hand, I can, I can select and see what is, what is working well in our case, because the, we, we would like to achieve the lead time, payment lead time, the lowest possible. So um, I can exactly see uh, what are the, the results even, even further analyze it uh, using the key influencers view. And basically this is the AI visual uh, provided by Power BI. It's really easy to use and, uh, and we can analyze the data on the parameters we want to. And let's move to the next report, Nicolas. So the finance report, which is for most uh, managers and board of directors, a um, uh, very important report. Um, uh, it's and and moreover, uh, the it's the, um, the indicators of this finance report, meaning turnover, gross margin, EBIT, EBITDA. Those can be very well um, be be structured here in a very nice report for everyone to be able to view. Um, with this report, obviously, you can follow up on the revenue and the costing structure of the entire company at any point of time. Now, some companies close once every trimester, other companies uh, close in, in, in different ways. We at Familia Big Metallo, we decided to close every month so that we have a good view of um, how we are performing overall um, month after month. And then here we can select Obviously, the first in this case, the first four months of 2020, and what you can see are two great parts. And I will start this time with the right-hand side of the um, of the page. Here you see the entire uh, P&L structure, like it is in the um, uh, accounting books, in the Belgium accounting rules. But you have to know that you can um, modify this as much as you want, and you can change the account numbers and move them to another grouping in function of how you want to report um, uh, to, uh, to the managers or to the board of directors. Um, here you can see on the, uh, the actuals, so the selected year and the selected month, the actuals last year, meaning the same period last year, the difference between this year and last year in terms of percentage, and uh, an overall overview of what are the percentages as compared to the overall sales? Now, this percentage um, of 
all the costs compared to the overall revenue streams are very important when you compare uh, this to other companies or even to other markets. This can be very interesting for um, any any um, any manager who wants to compare its company to other uh, peers. Now, on the left hand side, we have the key metrics. We have three parts: the key metrics, which are the sales of last year, the cost of goods sold, the gross margin, the EBIT in year minus one, and the EBITDA. And all, always we compare this year to last year, but we could also compare it to two years before or three years before. That's not a problem. And then we have the nice yellow, uh, the, sorry, the red and green arrows to say in what way it has increased or decreased. The second part is the selected year actuals breakdown where we see that the sales are 100%, and then we see how the cost breakdown actually is getting to the um, EBIT all the way at the end. And then we have the last um, part, which is the operational expenses. And here we have a distributed chart uh, of our operational expenses um, over the month, and you see that it varies quite a bit. So um, here also we need to investigate in how come um, our operational expenses vary this much over this period of time? Lucas? Thank you. In <clears throat> uh, here, I would like to particularly focus on the financial statement uh, breakdown visual, so this one. And uh, when you are building uh, financial reports in Power BI, uh, the most common ones you will focus first, uh, first of all are balance sheet and p report. Of course, cash flow report as well, or equity report. Uh, and this might be really difficult to prepare at the end. Uh, and this is because we don't really have uh, any standard Power BI visual, which can easily be handle, handling PL reports. Uh, you, might, you may, of course, try to use standard matrix visual, but it's not intuitive. And usually, you can be blocked when you. you when you would, you would like to calculate certain, certain values on the rows, like, like here we have a gross margin and, and so on. Uh, of course, you can try building, you can try build your breakdown in Excel and then import it to the, as a separate table to your model, but this is also not easy part and uh, in most likely you will fail without uh, the, the, the support of the developer. Uh, so, so what we have done here is we have used a great visual from AppSource. It is called Financial Reporting Matrix by ProfitBase. And really, we really recommend that, uh, that visual because what is great about the, this visual is that you can create your, all your own calculated uh, columns uh, and rows. So for instance, a gross margin, uh, all these which are bolded, they are calculated by us. And in most cases, is this is what you would like you, you would like to see on the PNL breakdown report, uh, and and moreover, in here you can even uh, press on any of the costs to see what GL accounts are making up uh, your total, and this is uh, enabled for for every part of the report to to verify what GL accounts are giving us the totals. So uh, yeah, so thank you for this part. That was our last uh, report. So we can go back to presentation. Yeah, thank you, gentlemen. That was that was really impressive. Thank you for regards to you and your team uh, for the uh, for your into, input into this project, and especially thank you, thank you, Nicola, for being so generous with your time and with your ideas, uh, both during the project and and uh, while preparing for this webinar. So um, I have a wrap up for you. Uh, let's focus on some key takeaways that we thought will, will be the most important. Uh, what we were trying to impress upon you during this, uh, during this session is that Power BI is not this you know, nicely looking uh, gimmick, but it's a very practical tool uh, that, can, uh, uh, that can be found 
very helpful in uh, dealing with daily uh, company operations and in enhancing decision making process. Uh, Nicola has uh, proposed a couple of uh, situations where Power BI is helping their company to make decisions. I will just uh, I will just uh, remind two of them. So the one about uh, when VMM decided that the best strategy uh, based on how their customers are buying from them was to concentrate on customer farming and maybe not so much on hunting for new customers. And the second one uh, based on um, minimum and uh, maximum uh, stock points in the warehouse, they are deciding upon their purchase plan. Uh, what is more, Power BI can help you to understand your business at a completely uh, new and deeper level and have this more holistic, holistic view. Uh, you probably remember in our end-to-end -end report how nicely it is giving us this snapshot view of the whole quote-to-cash uh, process where we can just have a look at um, at different stages of this process and their lead time, uh, whether, or, whether or not some of the stage is a bottleneck, bottleneck and then use the key influencers to see why it actually happens, why a certain stage is, uh, is a bottleneck. And last but not least, um, I would like to emphasize that uh, actually doing this sort of project is, uh, is based on a cooperation between us and the customer. Uh, it's great to start uh, when the customer actually starts with defining their stakeholders, what is important for them, what is important for different departments, and even what is important um, uh, from the perspective of an individual users. It's, it's great when they can uh, assign certain KPIs to, to that because it really makes our job easier. And actually this customer vision is crucial uh, because even the best partner without this customer vision uh, cannot pull off this project uh, himself. And we need to remember that uh, creating such reports is an iterative process. Uh, we have sessions back and forth, exchanging ideas. And even if we implement one thing, uh, one, one, one especially nice feature, it can create two different ideas, how to uh, pull, out, pull, pull, pull up data, even in a more effective way. Uh, so before we go into a Q&A session, and I still strongly encourage you to, uh, to, to uh, write your questions in the chat box or in the Q&A box, I can see that we already have several questions there. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, I would like to uh, say a few words about our, about our company and, uh, and future events. So we at Dynamics Development Center, uh, we are a gold partner uh, within ERP competency. So we are really experts in uh, what is now called Dynamics 365 Business Central, what used to be called uh, Dynamics NAV and Navision. Uh, we have also strong competencies around Power BI, as you could see, and uh, Microsoft Azure. Uh, what is what is very important is that we are this truly international partner. Uh, we are present in most European markets. Uh, we also focus our, our efforts in North America. So all in all, there are more than 30 countries where we have developed projects. And we have um, also like uh, multinational projects where uh, Dynamics NAV or Business Central is, is used within one database by two, three, five, even more, even more companies from different countries. Um, yeah, the last thing is that uh, we are part of an EIP group and within the group, we have one of the biggest uh, dynamics teams within our region, which is Central Eastern Europe. Uh, we currently have more than 60 consultants, developers, project managers, uh, including 21 experts. So experts is a person with at least 10 years of experience around experts. We are creating implementation, support and development teams. Yep, I would like also to take this opportunity to invite you to our future webinars. Uh, I will probably slow down my voice uh, a little bit so that uh, you can uh, pull up your phone and uh, be ready to scan this QR code. Uh, 
uh, it will take you to a landing page, the first one QR code, it will take you to a landing page uh, where you can register to our next event. <clears throat> this event is called Development Outsourcing is in Business Central. Uh, because we as a partner focus not only on implementation, support and development, uh, but also help other partners and, uh, and customers whenever they feel that they have lack of uh, resources, especially in the development domain. This is when we jump in and make our developers available for um, our customers' projects or, or, or for projects of other partners. Uh, the second QR code uh, will take you to, to another landing page where you can uh, subscribe to a list. Uh, and uh, throughout this list, we inform about future events, especially about webinars like this one. So if you like today's events, I think you would, you, you would not want to, to miss another one. You can register to, to the list. Uh, with the second QR code. And the last part, uh, a little bit more information about Power BI. Um, I think that some of you already know these resources, but uh, maybe for some of them, for, for some of you, they will be useful. <clears throat> uh, you can check out official Power BI website with the first, first link. Uh, some of you maybe would like to certify with, uh, with Power BI. This is what the second link is for. You can find a number of certificates there. Just be careful because some of them are gonna be retired uh, in January, uh, but there are some new like Power BI Consultant or Power BI Associate. Uh, these are new certifications. Uh, you can prepare for them using the, the very, very, very nice and very well prepared uh, self-study courses produced by Microsoft on Microsoft Learn. Uh, then you can check uh, full Power BI documentation with the, with the third link. And uh, when you go very deep with Power BI and you need partner help, here we are. Uh, you can see a link to direct link to my LinkedIn profile. You can connect with me over there. And also uh, there is uh, uh, an email address to our team. So uh, thank you so much, uh, Lukasz and Nikola, for, for the presentation. Now, uh, please take the stage one more time to host the Q&A session. Uh, yeah, the floor is yours. Right, how much time we have for the Q&A session? Uh, we should have around 15 minutes. 15 minutes, okay. Yeah. Uh, so perhaps I will start with the, with the first question. And then I can uh, I will move through the all the questions uh, further. Uh, so let me first first of all uh, uh, let me read the question first. So uh, the question is about the, the subsequent sub, sub, subsequent periods as well. So we can uh, easily extend for uh, the reports easily extend for the sub, sub, subsequent periods uh, and uh, comp and uh, help comparison. And is there any control mechanics in build to ensure the data is unaltered or modified in the next periods? So I think that this question is more related to the, to the system you are using, uh, to the system, uh, to, to the data we, we, we are using in, in, to get the Power BI reports. Uh, so basically, uh, we are, in our case, we are using Dynamics Business Central, and then we, there we have uh, Functionalities which allow us to, to block certain uh, certain uh, data for any period of time. So I, I, will, I believe that this is more question uh, uh, ERP system or the data source you, you use. Um, Lukas, we are losing your voice a little bit. I think it's 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 uh, related to how far you are from the microphone. If that's possible. All right. Yeah. No, it's no, it's okay. I think. Yes, so, so just to answer the first question, I believe we don't have any control mechanics uh, inside the Power BI. It's more related to your data source and the way the data is, uh, is, is transferred, the way the data is controlled on your source level. In, in our case, uh, uh, Navision writes in the SQL and then we go and pick uh, with the queries, we go and pick up the information from the SQL, right, Lucas? Exactly, yes. And we make and some new views, um, sometimes some new views in order to be able to 
consolidate some information from different tables in the SQL, right? Exactly, and this is also a question number four uh, when uh, when user when uh, uh, when the question is asked about the backend of the solution and how how easily we can adapt the backend to 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 your needs. Uh, so basically, if you are using Dynamic Snuff or Business Central, uh, it sh it should be really easy to to count to accomplish the reports, uh, especially the sales or purchase reports, because in most cases we are working on the standard Dynamics data. Uh, we are creating. Uh, we have created uh, se several views, Power BI, uh, views uh, directly dedicated to to Power BI, and and basically we recognize that uh, it is the best practices to to use SQL views. Uh, we do. We are not using web services. We know that we can uh, publish pages or queries on on web services, and then. Uh, upload them to Power BI, but our, from our practice, we believe that using uh, preparing views on the SQL level is much more efficient. And uh, the views, of course, can be uh, moved to, to another project, right? Uh, if we are having the same data structure, especially if, we, if you are asking about dimensions, uh, if you are using dimension tables, then that's, that's applicable to every company. Maybe and uh, about the next question, um, Lucas, on the Q and A side, because you have questions on the chat, but then you have questions also on the Q and A. Okay. Yes, one was taken in the Q and A. Um, by the way, I can click answer live, and this is when our attendees will see the question. So just let, let just let me know which question you would like to. Uh, well, let's start with the first one. I think that's a pretty easy one for you to answer, Lucas. What map widget was used in the logistics report? Well, basically, it's, it's just a standard standard uh, map shape, uh, which 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 was delivered in uh, in last month's Bar Pi BI team. And there, you could have uh, you by default you have a few few maps for few countries uh, already there in the visual. But you can uh, basically you can uh, use different uh, external sources to import any any other uh, country map uh, to the Power BI. Uh, so 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 it's it's a standard visual from Power BI source, visual source. Okay, should we move to the next question then regarding key influencers tab? You mentioned it is powered by AI. Can you please talk a bit more about this feature? So we knew this uh, question was going to come, Lucas. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so first of all, we uh, so so the, the feature is really really easy to use, right? Uh, maybe I will not uh, not describe what exactly is behind the the scenes. I mean, what uh, what uh, exactly uh, how it's how it's built by the Power BI team, but how I show you how easily it's it's really to to be. Uh, to be used. So in this case, I'm, I'm going to open just one report for you in the Power BI desktop. So the visual K influencer visual is one of the newest visual provided by Power BI. And uh, in, to build this visual, you, you just need uh, dimension, you just need few dimensions and the, the, the data you would like to, uh, particular values you would like to analyze. First of all, let me uh, open the one of the, uh, the visuals. We can focus again on the invoice to invoice to payment. And if I press here on the K influence visual, you just put two parameters. So it's a very it's it's low code uh, visual. You can put your parameter you measure. So in our case, it's payment lead time. And then I can put all the dimensions I use in the in the power in in our in my data source in my uh, data model, and these dimensions are explaining why uh, these dimensions are then calculated and uh, and uh, the visual is giving us the result which of them are having the most impact or the less impact on the value which is calculated here. So the payment lead time. Okay, next question. So the next question is, how many days did it take 
to implement these reports. And maybe I can give you um, the, the, the customer side of this question. Uh, we've been working on this since uh, June already. Uh, and in terms of um, in, in terms of days, it's really hard to, to, to say because it depends really much on in what way are you familiar with the data that is um, generated from the users, in what way the users are familiar with the data they put in into the ERP system in our case, um, and in what way is your company mature to be able to report on these things. So I would say that I spend more or less full day on um, uh, per week um, as of uh, June to, to implement this, to go back and forth with the managers, with Dynamics DC, to, um, to answer all the questions that Dynamics DC has, but also to go back and forth and to test every report um, in terms of what decisions can we make, how can we improve, where do we improve, um, and so it's it's really much an iterative process, and it's, it depends on how much time you have available to put in there. Um, Lucas, do you have uh, anything to add to this? Well, exactly uh, as you said. So it's basically uh, related on both sides how how much time we have and how much energy we put to any report. But I can believe that from uh, from our perspective, uh, we uh, we. Uh, after a project, after a few certain projects, uh, we have some some connectors already prepared and and, and some uh, visuals already which we could uh, we could adapt to to, per, to to particular needs to to new projects. So uh, so so yeah, basically the reports uh, basically takes um, I believe from technical parts. So the start of the report, if you have. Uh, requirements which are clear and, and easy to adapt. It takes us less than uh, one week to, to prepare the first version of the report. So hopefully this answers your question. Okay, so maybe we can go to the next one. Um, ERP system, uh, wait. Is the data anonymized so that you can share the report? Well, the data is anonymized, uh, but th this is more a question to, to both sides. Uh, we can make the report. Uh, it's, it's more a question if you if you ask about uh, the front end or the back end. If, it, if it's a question to back end, then we will need to anonymize it more because we, in some cases, we did, it, we did not use just the uh, uh, the, na the names of the customers we hid in them, them uh, but on the back end they are still visible. So, so it's more like a question to answer for for all sides. So yeah, I, I think that's it, this is to be de to be decided. We'll, we will certainly consider with uh, with Nicola with VMM maybe creating some small sample of of the report to be shared. But uh, this is something to be decided. Exactly. Next question is, are all analytical tools shown in this in the reports available by default in Power BI or was there any add-ons that had to be purchased? I think most of them were, were available, huh? Yeah, I mean, uh, all of them are available and uh, we, don't, we didn't have to purchase any, any, any additions. Uh, the only thing- see extra invoices come in anyway, so uh, it's yeah. <laughs> all for free. <laughs> Exactly. The only thing is that the project, of course, uh, is, is to be valued, but uh, the, the, the application itself is, is free. Uh, the only thing is that, uh, that it's free to build reports and to publish report to your uh, Power BI account. But if you like to manage the reports and share the reports across your, the company uh, and to different users and to use workspaces and so on, this, this requires the Power BI Pro, Pro version. And the Pro version itself, it's not really expensive. I believe, Nicolas, you are using uh, Pro yeah, version. Yeah, it's about, it's about uh, 10, 10 or 12 euros per month, I think. And something yeah, like it's, ten, it's 10 euros, right. 10 euros per month. Uh, and that's, that's for the other um, managers to be able to use the reports and to uh, even modify them if, if they want to. But that I, I, I don't... I don't allow them to. Um, yeah, and, uh, 
And who was there was actually one add-on, right, used in the finance report that you mentioned from the from the oh, uh, Yes, exactly. It, it's an add-on. Uh, let's say it's not uh, add-on uh, like a different uh, application or, or something like that. It's is basically uh, a visual from App Source because Power BI has its own uh, standard visuals which are delivered by the by the uh, product provider, so so Power BI team. But of course, there are many visuals which are created by the community. And uh, these visuals you can also import to your Power BI. You can make these visuals organizational visuals, like an organization visual. So you, you are certifying these visuals to your uh, project in your company. And, and, and this is still a free visual, right? Uh, some of them may, be, may require additional purchase, but uh, in, in my experience, I, I didn't have to uh, buy any additional visual. I just used the, the ones which are provided by, by, by the Power BI and the community, the free ones. And then okay. in most cases, they resolve our needs. Next question, ERP system, is this your data collection app? Also, how is your data collected and fed into the system by local level team managers? Well, for us, the ERP system is is um, englobing actually all the all the processes. It's uh, a vision, like I said, it's Navision uh, 2016, which writes down everything in the SQL uh, database, uh, from which Power BI goes and uh, fetch the, the information. We create new views, and then we pre represent that in the um, in Power BI. Lucas, you want to add anything? Well, yeah, I think that's that's that explains the whole the whole okay. picture. So, uh, um, next yeah. question is: Can you use flow fields, flow filters on your Power BI dashboards? Uh, okay, it's, I think that the flow fits and flow filters is more is related to uh, the Dynamics uh, systems. As there we have flow fits and flow filters. Yes, you can use them, and basically in some cases you will need to create them from scratch, and uh, in some cases you will be able to import them. Uh, but there are many more advanced capabilities which can uh, allow you to to get the same results when you use flow filters or uh, or flow fields. So. So the answer is yes. Okay, how did you make, I oh, know, sorry, do you support write back for budget and forecast? Um, in our cases, we, uh, maybe Nicolas, you'd like to answer the question, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what, what you mean by write back. Yeah. Um, uh, if we support budgets, yes. Um, uh, how we do budgets, it's actually, um, uh, we will be using the vision for this, uh, but in, in the first instance, we wanted to use budgets in order to, um, um, and how it's uh, um, actually on the sales, uh, on the sales management side, we wanted to budgetize um, in terms of how much the sales need to increase. Uh, that was for us in the first instance, the more important. In the second instance, and that's where we're going to get in, uh, in a few months from now, we will be able to put a budget in the vision uh, where we will also try to predict in what way, if our sales go up, in what way our cost of goods sold go up, and in what way um, our, uh, all the other costs, fixed and vari variable costs, uh, will go up as well. Um, this is, will be supported because this is written, if it's written in a vision, it's written in SQL, and if it's written in SQL, I know that uh, it can be represented in Power BI. Well, I hope that this answers the question. I can see that there is one more uh, statement uh, uh, explaining yeah, what right exactly back right back. Yeah, I think uh, I can answer the question. We have capabilities to do that. Uh, we haven't done that before in our project with VM Steel. But basically, first of all, you have Power Apps connect connectors and you have data flows connectors. So you can use Power Apps to um, to to write write as you said write back the data to your ERP system. Uh, on the other hand, uh, there are some uh, specific uh, visuals to to for for forecasting. Uh, also, these visuals are uh, custom visuals, and they allow allow you to to make some scenarios inside Power BI, right? So, um, but you showed write... me. 
you, Lucas, you also showed me how we can maybe influence if I say, for instance, um, the, um, the sales needs to go up by 5% in my budget. You know, you showed me a place where I can just type in 5% and then my budget would adapt itself to 1%. Yes, yeah? exactly. In our case, we are using at the moment, as, as Nicolas said at the beginning, we are not using a ERP system for budgeting. We plan to do that in future. We can we are using uh, budgeting inside inside Power BI. We have a specific tables for for budget results and and so on. So it it, it also make make uh, it depends on the data source you use. Okay, so the um, uh, penultimate question is: How did you make slicer pane on the very first report showed on the presentation? I think because maybe you can share your screen there. Um. I, I'm, I think I still share, I'm still sharing the, the, the screen. Uh, basically on the, the slicer pane we use, we use on our most of our uh, reports. It's really easy to, to well, basically maybe not, uh, not that easy, but uh, it, it requires some practice. We are using bookmarks and um, and uh, and we select which visuals we would like to see on a, on a specific bookmark. Let me let me quickly show you my uh, my screen my sales report. So first of all, you need to make sure that both visuals are visible, bookmark and selections. And uh, when I'm when I first of all I, I've created a visual when I have created when I have added a specific uh, action to it, and this actions action is opening a, a new uh, bookmark for me. So if I control press on it, you can see that it automatically shows the show slicer pane. And if I uh, unpress it here. It's going back to hide slicer pane one, and basically in slicer pane one, I can decide which of the visuals should be visible or, or not. So that's how we are creating slicer panes inside Power BI. Okay, so the um, question before last: Can you tell us a bit about how the PNL was built? You can read from any data source. Yeah, so, so basically how we have built the, the, the PNL report. Uh, so first of all, you need to pay attention to your uh, data source and see if you have all the uh, data in your uh, chart of account. In our case, we didn't have, uh, we didn't have uh, categories uh, on our GL accounts. So basically we, we have created a special special view when we're based on the Nicolas uh, selection, we have distinguished which GL accounts are related to sales, which of them are cost related, which of them are taxes and so on. Then we import the data to the Power BI data model and we have used uh, a profit-based uh, financial matrix visual uh, in the newest version, because it, it, on the app source there are there is still the, the the older older version, so so that's why that's how we can create a PNL. The other way, which I seen see is also common and sometimes is used by by different uh, consultants, is to provide is to prepare the breakdown in sign Excel, import the Excel to the data model and then uh, connect your Excel uh, to, your, uh, to your GL account table and prepare some connections in Power, Power Query to, to, get this, uh, to, to get the final results. From my perspective, it's much harder to do that and it's not easy to use. And the profit-based visual, uh, I believe it's, it's much better in our case. Okay, and then um, uh, it was the last question, but then there is another question that was uh, that arise. Um, but let me start with that question: How the data, how the data stored in the Power BI Pro workspace corresponds with GDPR regulations? 
Now, I'm not, not sure. a GDPR consultant nor a specialist, um, but in, in our case is that the, the users, they, uh, we have an internal workspace uh, and they cannot share it with, with external uh, um, uh, users. Um, but then again, I'm not a GDPR specialist, so I don't, I don't, I don't really know what are the, what the regulations or, uh, or what are the laws in terms of uh, data sharing are. Exactly. I believe that uh, this this answer can be quite, can be uh, uh, we can answer this question later. We can provide you as uh, documentation from Power BI. Also, there is a role level security adapted uh, functionality to Power BI to make your data more secure. And it's also on the uh, as, as Nicola said on the ERP system. Okay, and so the last question, can you can please explain how you transfer selections from the hidden slicer pane to main bookmark? I would say that was the last question. Yeah, I believe that this is uh, related to the previous one, right? So the sales one. Um, so basically it's very easy to do. Um, so you can select any visual you would like to hide. Uh, on a being on the specific bookmark at the moment. And then you just right click and you can update the bookmark and it, this way it will, uh, it will update all the selections on your bookmark. So, uh, so there is a really nice, uh, maybe I can, I can tell you a bit more about the community. Uh, so basically the community of Power BI is, is really uh, sportive and there are many, many different um, uh, scenarios or, or uh, instructions how we can build some of the uh, of the sections. So this one can be also found on the on the internet. Uh, explain step by step. So I will not get into the detail right now. I think. Okay. Yeah, we have uh, we have two more in the chat uh, section. Uh, so, so if, if they can be handled quickly, that would be great. If not, uh, if not, we'll just answer them uh, with the material that we will send until the end of the week. What do you, what do you think, Lukasz? Can you see? Can you see those? Okay. Yeah, I can. I can re maybe read them out. Uh, a few questions. I assume that you are using import data loading method, um, not direct query. At least in these yes. five examples, did you have any problems with Power BI service performance or resources? How many simultaneous users of reports do you have? And do you use any direct query reports in your project? At the moment, to, on this, with the VM Steel, we don't use any direct query uh, reports. We only use the uh, import loads, as you mentioned. And basically, we did not have uh, requirement uh, and for direct queries. Because in most cases, direct queries we use when we want to see the data on live. In here, it is, it is enough for us to import the data, to refresh the data a few times in a day. So we don't need to use the direct query module. But in some cases, we will, we will definitely use. And uh, basically, we didn't have any problems with the Power BI service. Even more, I can say that if you like say years late uh, before there were problems with Power BI service, the, the performance was not that uh, not that very nice. Um, but right now we, we can we see the improvement and that's why we we are getting into Power BI more and more. And just to answer the, the question of how many simultaneous users of reports do you have, I would say about 10. And that's, that's, that's to get on the web service, right? Uh, the next question is, what are the PNL sources of data that you can accommodate? Is it easy to adapt it in Power BI platform? Source of data. So first of all, we have the char uh, chart of account. We have dimensions uh, on our model and also GL entry. So basically the uh, transactional table. Uh, but Basically, it all depends on your data, right? On uh, how many rows, how many uh, um, entries you have in, on a monthly basis, uh, how the data grows and so on. And uh, we find it 
fine to, to, to still use Power BI, to still use SQL views. And we don't need to do any, um, we don't need to use at the moment any data warehouses or, uh, or data flows, which is also a nice new tool in Power BI to speed up the, the process of uh, refreshing the data. Yeah, we could have data from an Excel or from wherever actually. Yeah? So the, 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 there's many different data sources um, possible. Exactly. So the last question, uh, did you have to make some development in SQL rather than in Power BI, or you tried to implement all necessary logic and metrics into Power BI? Perhaps you've already said that, but how many developers you had in your team working on this project? I will maybe answer um, uh, <laughs> last question. Uh, mm -hmm. There were two developers, um, meaning Lucas and uh, Matthäus, right? Yes. Uh, and on my side, I was the project manager on the customer side to, uh, um, to manage the different stakeholders, like I said before, manage the different stakeholders and the needs from the different stakeholders. Right, and uh, uh, about the SQL and rather than Power BI. Yes, we rather use SQL than Power BI uh, capabilities like calculated columns or DAX in, in every place we can use SQL, right? Because in some cases we need to, uh, we need to use Power BI, DAX language or MDX language, but it is better to have all the calculations you can do on your SQL or in your data source, because every time you refresh the report, uh, all the calculations are being uh, done uh, on, on the Power BI level, the, the calculations done in the Power BI. So if you like your report to be more efficient, then I would rather use SQL to calculate uh, additional columns, uh, metrics, and, and so on and do the in Power BI the less. So in Power BI, just focus on the visual, to visualize the data and to create uh, some totals measures and so on. It all depends on the data you have, on the report and the requirements, requirements you, uh, you have for your, also from your client side. Thank you. Okay. Those are all the questions. Uh, yeah, there is one more in Q and A, but this is the one we'll uh, we'll take offline. So because uh, because we have run out of time, so thank you, thank you very much to all the attendees. Thank you to my co-panelists. Thanks, uh, Nicola. Thank you, Lukas. That was that was a great job. Uh, I'm very happy that the webinar was so well so well attended. Uh, all the registrants can expect to receive the aforementioned materials by the end of this week. So thank you, have a good day to all of you and to see you in our future events. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.